The island is so rugged that in many areas, rice can only be grown in terraces. It's backbreaking labor done entirely by hand. But in today's society, that kind of technology just can't compete anymore. The older folk tell me how much has changed in 50 years. The children are all leaving for the cities. Families are losing their connection to the land. A way of life is disappearing. Japan's next generation of farmers are now looking towards the ocean. They're after a new kind of treasure. Pearls. Once harvested exclusively by the ama, the samurai of the sea. Ama have been around for 2,000 years. They're always women and start their training at the end of elementary school. They dive for three to four hours each day. Their white clothing is supposed to scare off sharks. The ama can stay under for a minute or more and dive in water cold enough, they say, to kill a man. Until the early 1900s, the only pearls around were wild ones, and only the ama knew where to find them. Then a man named Mikimoto came up with a way to cultivate pearls, and a new industry was born. They hang the oysters under rafts that are anchored in the bay, and bring them up to be checked and cleaned at least twice a year. Oysters are filter feeders. To thrive, they need a strong current and plenty of algae to eat. The shells themselves come from China, and the pearl seeds from the United States. Japan provides the technical expertise. This was Mikimoto's carefully guarded secret. How to get the oyster to accept a nucleus and cover it with mother of pearl. First you sacrifice a second oyster and cut its mantle into strips. Then you disinfect each strip and chop it up. You place the oyster in what looks uncomfortably like a dentist's chair. You then insert that tiny piece of mantle into the oyster's reproductive system, and beside it, the seed pearl. This stimulates the oyster to secrete a layer of knocker over the nucleus and produce a pearl. These oysters are particularly hardy and can be packed together pretty tight. If a typhoon is coming, the entire raft can be towed to safety. What they can't avoid is the increasing pollution being pumped into the waters around Japan. In some areas, it's getting so bad that the local farmers have abandoned pearling altogether and taken up another line of work, fish farms. It's an idea whose time has come. Japan has 126 million mouths to feed and the average Japanese eats seven times more fish than his American counterpart. Though raising fish, he tells me, isn't exactly cheap. These guys are carnivorous, and it shows. Nakata-san has to feed them three times a day, 365 days a year, rushing from one cage to the next. And he has to buy an enormous amount of raw fish meal, to make one kilo of domestic fish, you have to feed them two kilos of protein. But when they reach full size, it's payday. Each fish gets its own slot in the box. They'll be worth a king's ransom in the restaurants of Tokyo. But for Nakata-san, there's something about his job that he values even more. Unlike the businessmen in Tokyo, he gets home each day in time to play with his son.